Hello everyone, for OneWrestling.com, this is Bill After, and welcome down to After's Alley. And you know, we were calling this Way Back Wednesday, but I found from a lot of your emails that some of you are watching this on Thursdays and Fridays and Saturdays, so we're just going to, uh, uh, we're just going to go back to the uh, After Classic audio here, and uh, to start this new After Classic audio, I decided to bring back a classic himself. He's my, my pal Sal, Sal Carrente, the big cheese. Welcome to the After Chat. Hello, William, the prince of publications, right here live now on video. <laughs> well, it hasn't been that in a while, but I appreciate that. Yeah, live on. You're, isn't it amazing how things have changed now where uh, other than Fighting Spirit magazine, really, uh, I'm not in print much, and, and OneWrestling.com here, uh, but the... The, the magazines, the days of, uh, well, Fighting Spirit is still alive and still around here. So And PWI is, is as well. Our good friend Stu Sachs is uh, the editor. But, uh, yeah. But, but I want to clue people in on who you are in the scheme of things here. I say my pal Sal. You're also the guy that uh, came up in, uh, uh, with the, the handle uh, Actors Alley for uh, my alley down here. Uh, yeah, yeah. When uh, when you broke away from the publications, it was uh, it was time to move a, a guy like you into a new venue. I had been seeing you on TV for years, and then mm. been lucky enough to uh, to meet you when this whole thing just seemed a lot simpler. Way back, it was just it just seemed a whole lot back in the day. And um, yeah, what can you do? Times times change, but yeah. you changed and evolved with it. And here. Hey, you are still going strong. All the fans know Bill Hafter, just like we did when I was growing up, and uh, it's it's a great thing. Thank you. I, I really appreciate that, and I appreciate everything you've done for me. Not only not only were you uh, great when you were a referee, Sal, and calling me uh, and Craig Peters with results uh, from all the places you worked uh, all the time, but you also um, started a website for me called All About Wrestling that people don't know about that uh, we, we just it didn't work because I didn't have the time to uh, to invest in it but I want to thank you publicly for that and also for having me uh, host Wrestle Reunion along with uh, DDP yeah that was a, those are great times and you know look I still remember showing up at the London publishing offices with Nikita Koloff for mm -hmm. the uh, the photo session down there it was my first time at the offices and we all went to lunch, meeting you outside Madison Square Garden, and uh, you know, just the guy I'd seen on Florida Championship Wrestling. Now, wait, wait, back stuff. up, back up. I want, I want to tell these people how old were you when we first met at Madison Square Garden? You were a fan hanging out, waiting to say hello to the wrestlers. Um, I came I'm over and talked to you. Tell you the best I know, maybe. 17 17 years but old. I can't be positive but it's 17 16 okay all right it's, uh, it's quite a while ago and yeah, I was, was blessed enough to have contacts to go up through the back door with the wrestlers and um, you know sometimes the, the wrestlers would walk by me and of course I didn't know anybody at the time and um, but then get involved uh, knowing it later and um, you, you know that that type of thing and uh, but we all just had a good time. We did, and that's what I want to. That's what I want to bring you on this segment, because I want to discuss the the good times and the old times. Now, your favorite time in the business, from what I remember, were the days of Bruno San Martino, Pedro Morales, guys. You just knew them by their first names. You knew who they were, and uh, back in those days when we all used to go to the Garden all the time and travel around the circuits to Boston and Philly and all these places and. Uh, these guys were classics, and I called you because you had such a knowledge as a fan and even being in the business later on uh, of these guys, so I figured when I'm playing these tapes, why not talk to you about it? So here's what I want to do. I went to my old trusty audio files, and I found a classic that's never been heard. I never played this anywhere. And I know you knew all, each one of these guys. The man in the middle was Stan the Man Stasiak. And what was he in the middle of? He was in the middle of, he beat Pedro Morales for the WWF world title 
in Philadelphia on December 1st, 1973. That's the WWWF, Worldwide Wrestling Federation. He then lost it just a few days later on December 12th, 1973 at Madison Square Garden to Bruno San Martino. And Stasiak was managed by the Grand Wizard of Wrestling. Give us a, 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 a brief feel of uh, uh, what it was like for you back in those days of Pedro, Bruno, Stasiak. Well, you know, let me say this. First of all, so many fans of today don't know, really and truthfully can't appreciate the great managing trio of Freddie Blassie, Captain Lou Albano, and the Grand Wizard. You had three different and unique individuals, and all of them made all the fans, including me, absolutely irate, which was their job. Um, I still remember showing up at the Garden and getting the word that... Um, it was Butcher Paul Vachon that confirmed for me that Ernie Roth, the Grand Wizard, was dead. And that was crushing because we got along so, so well. Yeah, he was one um, of my dearest friends as well. He, he just, a, just a great, great guy. And here's a guy, I don't know what he, he could have weighed, 100 pounds. And yet, I mean, people just absolutely wanted to kill him. But yeah. what a great guy. And I, seeing him without his turban and glasses on for the first time, I, I, I was like the kid that got the golden ticket at Willy Wonka's uh, factory. <laughs> You, you know, it was, yeah. it was that big a thing for me. And a guy like Stasiak was a was a big, rough guy. But let's face it, you beat Morales. Uh, he held the title, what, a couple of years, maybe um, eight, 18 months. But New York, Philadelphia, Boston, all of these places, this was, this was Bruno land. Yeah. Right? Yeah. This was... This was Italy on the East Coast is, is what it was. But well, it became you know, Pedro what? land for a while, too, as you said. Sure, sure, ab absolutely. But... Let's face it, no one's ever going to break Bruno's record, uh, you know, of days with the title. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the people, him, and, you know, when he lost the title to Koloff, and then Morales uh, stepped in and beat after, what, maybe a month or so. Um, that garden, I understand, you could hear a pin drop. I was in, there. In Madison Square. Yeah. When the title was lost. Well, let me ask you, what weren't you there for? <laughs> I mean, Abe Lincoln against... Uh, uh, Carl Gotch, uh, Frank Gotch, and George Hankage Smith. Uh, yeah, that's, a three -way. that's probably about it. <laughs> it certainly goes, uh, goes well beyond mine. But uh, Stasiak was a big, big, rough guy. Him and the other guy, uh, Ox Baker, with the hard punch. You, you work with these guys, and uh, you, you know they, they had that rough <coughs> thing. But when it's all said and done, Bruno San Martino was practically unbeatable. Well, so here, the tape I found. Very rare, like I said. This is the Grand Wizard usually did all the talking for his men, especially for Stasiak. And I found Stasiak in the hallway at Madison Square Garden about an hour before he was going to wrestle Bruno, and Grand Wizard wasn't around. I said, Stan, could sure. And I turned on the tape recorder, and I want to play the audio for everybody out there. Um, Sal, so we're going to have... How close was he standing... What's that? How close was he standing to Professor Elliot Marin in, in, in the back before the interview? Was it was Elliot there lurking in the... He, pro any of the he probably was. In the garden? No Elliot. He probably was. Elliot was, uh, um, for you fans who don't know, he was actually, beside a fan, he was on the security force at the garden, and he was... Elliot was always there, Professor Elliot. Uh, and we love him. He's he's still around. Uh, he's got some. He's got. Many, some... You guys who watch, many, many times, if you watch the WWE Network, you'll see Professor Elliot out there at ringside taking the jackets. Yeah. And then one of the biggest jobs, all the wrestling fans know Professor Elliot um, a lot because he's the guy that used to carry tapes from Allentown and Hamburg down to WOR, so they'd be on TV on Saturday night. If he didn't get there, there was no wrestling. We're going to have to do a, uh, a, a segment on Professor Elliot. Meantime, meantime, we need to go to the tape that everyone is waiting to hear. Stan the Main Stasiak, just short time before he goes out to the ring to lose to Bruno San Martino at Madison Square Garden. Sal Carrenti, Big Cheese, let's go to the audio. Just be laughed We're uh, at a rare moment here because the Grand Wizard uh, isn't in Stan Stasiak's dressing room. Stan Stasiak last Saturday defeated.
defeated Pedro Morales for the Worldwide Wrestling Federation title, and Pedro Morales, from what we hear, actually pinned himself. Stan, what happened? Oh, that's not true. That's not true? That is not true. Now, everybody, see, now, now I beat him fair and square now. there. Everybody's looking for excuses and, and trying to find an alibi and, a, and a, an easy way out for Morales. I faced this man several times. I, I, I was on the verge of defeating him, but somehow he got lucky a few times. So now here I beat him. His shoulders were pinned down to the count of three. He didn't pin himself because I was on top of him. How could he have pinned himself when I was when What I was did you do, a bridge up, Stan? I threw my foot into the turnbuckle and landed with all my weight on top of him, and he didn't know what happened until several seconds after when he recuperated. I was on top of him for the count of three. So he didn't pin himself. Uh, it was a mistake on, on, on his own stu uh, stupidity's behalf, but I pinned him fair and square. Do you feel Morales was like extra weak that night or something, or did was he missing something, or did Stan Stasiak have more than he ever had? I just saw through Morales. I've been telling you and other uh, people uh, all along, every time I get interviewed, that I know I can defeat him, and that the night is going to happen when, uh, some night it's going to happen when, and if he gives me a crack at the title again. And he doesn't have a referee that's protected. That uh, is right. This was in Philadelphia also. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, so let's not, he was in, in, in better shape than I ever seen him before. I wrestled him several times. And he was uh, more effective with his punches, with his holds, with his reflexes uh, than ever before. And so was I. I was, uh, I was just up to the occasion, that's all. Okay, Stan, tonight you're meeting Bruno San Martino. Now, San Martino... He was coming in, he was the Worldwide Wrestling Federation champion for eight years, and I imagine tonight he didn't know, but he's going to be trying to regain the title now. What's your, your defense on a guy like San Martino? You've wrestled him, and you've seen him wrestle a million times. Well, I, I, I've, uh, I haven't seen Bruno San Martino wrestle that much, because I was uh, on the West Coast all the time. He was a champion back East. But I, I've, uh, I have seen him wrestle on rare occasion, and some of it dates quite a ways back, so I can't... Uh, I can't go by that, really. But I do know from what I hear that he is a very, very powerful man and that he relies mainly on his strength. And uh, he does have the wrestling ability to go along with it. However, I have the wrestling ability to go along with it. I have the strength. I don't know if I can match his strength, but I do have some good defenses and some pretty good tactics that can, uh, that can put out any man any man at all, and don't forget one thing, no matter how strong he is, how tough he is, no man can withstand the hard punch. Okay, now, how does the Grand Wizard psych Stan Stasiak up for a match like this? Well, is there any hypnosis involved in this? As he, he's mentioned a long, long time ago that he likes to sort of hypnotize his wrestlers. He uh, does uh, talk to me a lot, and uh, at times I feel like I'm under a trance or something, but... Uh, mainly, uh, I, I do know one thing, and one thing that this man, the wizard, has done for me is give me the self-confidence that I have in my ability also. Uh, I am no pushover. He made me understand that uh, a lot of people have a tendency uh, not, not to uh, uh, know their own ability or, or have confidence in their own ability, but he let it be known to me that I do have all the aptitudes to be a great champion, to, to beat anybody in the world, and I have achieved that that right now and I'm going to stay there for a long time.